Good morning, everyone. This is Laura Garcia, a realtor in Jacksonville, Florida with Berkshire Hathaway. And today I wanted to talk to you about something um, that I, this was one of my first experiences with, with this property. Um, it is the product of a seller not doing a um, repair agreement up to the terms that we discussed in the contract. Um, so basically, in this instance, we had a repair agreement with a seller. We came and we did the reinspection, and we found uh, repairs not done, repairs not done up to code, and the repairs switched and done differently. Um, all things that um, are not according to contract and none of the rules were followed. Um, so I um, wanted to kind of share what would happen if you ran into this scenario. I've been in real estate for about 4.5 years, um, and this is the first time I've encountered it. So again, it's rare, but it's always good to know just in case you were to encounter the situation. Um, the first thing I would definitely say is when you're doing the repair agreement, you want to uh, write the contract well. Uh, the, what I mean by writing the contract well is when you're doing the repair agreement, don't leave things ambiguous. So, uh, for example, like um, here there was a bathtub that was leaking, which you could just put repair bathtub faucet but if you put repair and they discover it can't be repaired that could put your buyer um, you if you're the buyer on the line to repair the faucet all the way um, because they no longer can repair it so I always put repair or replace just in case it's not repairable um, also here we had a roof issue um, that had to do with water coming in through the siding and the inspector specifically requested Z flashing um, and so instead of just putting fix water barrier issue, I put install Z flashing, which was a good thing because that was one of the repairs that they tried to switch on us. They just put um, caulking on it and was like, oh, this is good to go. We don't need to worry about it. Um, and of course, that was not according to the contract, so we could hold them accountable to it. Um, so it's very important that you're specific in the contract um, and that when things go wrong, Assuming that they do, it doesn't mean they always do. Um, you can you can point the contract and say, this is what you agreed to. You have signed it, the seller, and this is how um, they need to be done. So um, that's one way I would do the repair agreement would be specific. And then the second thing I would do is with our company, we have a standard addendum. And in the standard addendum, it says that if the seller does not complete repairs the first time around, they're responsible for the reinspection fee. So if they don't do the repairs correctly and another inspector has to come out, um, they, the seller pays for that. So that kind of incentivizes the seller to get it right the first time. And then it also penalizes the seller for basically their incompetency uh, and not getting it done and wasting everybody's time. So we had that in this contract, which was just great. The reinspection fee was about $150. Of course, my buyer did not want to pay that because we we didn't. It wasn't our fault that the repairs were not done correctly, and we had to come back out. Um, so now at closing, the um, the seller will be paying for that out of their expenses. Um, so that's important to have. It's not in the standard contract, so you'd have to have it as an extra um, request. The uh, third thing I would do is before you do a reinspection get all receipts. So before you even schedule the first reinspection, before you even know whether they did the repairs or not, get all the receipts. And the reason for this is in the contract, it's required that you have copies of receipts so that when you move in, if something goes wrong, the buyer can always contact the people who originally do it. But also the contract states that licensed professionals, for example, the bathroom tub faucet needs to be done by a plumber. The flashing for the roof needs to be done by a roofer. Everything needs to be done by licensed professionals, including general contractors. They can't just call a handyman who is not licensed to come do these repairs. That handyman may be cheaper, but he doesn't know the codes. He's not gonna do everything up to that code. Um, so by having the receipts, you can basically check ahead of time, okay, I see all the repairs that were on our repair agreement listed in these receipts, so check that's done. And then everything is done by a licensed professional, so check that's done. Okay, we can go ahead and schedule the reinspection. So that can kind of prevent some some problems from the beginning, um, so that you can kind of know, okay, these weren't these repairs weren't really done. Um, and if the listing agent gives you a hard time, again, this is in the contract, so your realtor, the buyer's agent should know that they can hold the listing agent accountable and they can always, you, you don't have to close if repairs are not done. So then the next thing I would do is say you do the reinspection, repairs aren't done, okay, now you, 
you ha you're gonna have to do a second reinspection. Um, I would require the buyer's agent to get pictures before you schedule that next reinspection. So this is kind of an extra thing on top of the receipts because if they already did not do repairs as planned, then you again don't wanna waste your time or the buyer's agent does not wanna waste their time going out and inspecting again when we don't know what the repairs look like we don't know how they did so that's another thing I would request in the second go around is pictures of the repairs so you can just kind of verify okay we can go do the second reinspection they've held up their end of the bargain we're not gonna have a repeat of last time and then this is the biggest thing I, I've had I've not I haven't worked with people because this is my thing um, but I've had friends who did this and they regretted it after. And that is do not close if the repairs or anything that is in the contract is not done. A lot of sellers are gonna say, oh, you know, we didn't get this done. Okay, my guy's gonna be out there at you know noon and you closed at 10. Why would the seller follow up with anything once he has the money? So if the guy doesn't show up, what leverage do you have to make sure you know he does what he, he said he was going to do? Um, so what I always say is like, if there's something that needs to be done, like um, for example, right now we're getting the lawn mowed, um, they needed to maintain the property. Um, it's a little thing, like 40 bucks to get the lawn mowed, but it was on, in the contract, the seller needs to maintain the property, um, and we're not closing until it's done. Same with maid service, that's often a thing that needs to be done if they move out and it's gross, like the, the seller needs to maintain the property. He can have a maid service come out and you won't close until it's done. And by doing that, it's basically, um, so for example, this house was 140. The seller is not getting $140,000 until they do what you requested. And you're following the contract, so you're within your rights. Um, but that's a big motivation for the seller to hold true to what you are requesting. Um, because they're not gonna get their paycheck. And that's a lot of money. Um, for example, the reinspection fees 150. We had trouble with the listing agent and the seller paying it, and we said we weren't going to close unless they pay, paid it. The buyer is not going to pay it for them. So, is a seller really going to lose $140,000 over a $150 dispute? Not really. I mean, it's not smart of them. We have loan approval. We, the property appraised. My buyer has sent the money um, to the title company. So we basically all we need is the buyer to sign the papers, and they'll get their money. So. By us asking and requesting this, it's important. So again, do not close if things are not done, even if they promise that they will be done within an hour of closing. Um, so I hope this helped you out. Again, this was a very rare experience. Um, typically sellers do finish all the repairs before the reinspection, um, and then you don't have to do a second reinspection. So thanks for listening, and if you have any comments or any questions, feel free to comment below. Thanks, bye.